In this video, we will do a spherical balloon example in this section on related rates. So it says, you blow into a spherical balloon at a rate of 20 centimeters cubed per second. A asks, how fast is the radius changing when the radius is 7 centimeters and then when it's 12 centimeters? B asks, which is larger between the answers we got in part A? And explain why intuitively. Okay, so I first want to make a note about this type of question. So this is what's called a related rates problem. So a related rates problem involves two or more rates that are related so related, somehow connected, and in parentheses I'll put by an equation. Okay, so when we talk about a rate in this section, so we've seen um, a rate before. When we've seen rates, we think of derivatives. And in this case, we're going to be taking a derivative of something, I'll write derivative of stuff, with respect to time. So we'll be taking the derivative of some variable with respect to time. All right, so let's get into this problem. All right, so our first step in a related rates question is to draw a picture. Draw a picture, and in parentheses, I'm going to say if applicable. So if the question is such, we're drawing a picture will help us maybe visualize what's going on, it's going to be a good idea to draw it. And in this problem, I'd say yes, we should draw a picture. So it's talking about the spherical balloon. So I'm going to draw a sphere. Okay, so we have this sphere, and I'll, I'll do my best to try to make it look a little 3D. So I'll draw some lines to make it look like it's a little bit more 3D. So that's step one. We are on to step two. Step two is we assign variables. Assign variables to the quantities of interest, quantities of interest, so quantities that we actually care about, that are changing. Okay, so in our picture, as so we're blowing into this spherical balloon, as that happens, well, the balloon's going to get larger. So maybe I could draw from the center to the edge, I could draw the radius, the radius is going to be changing. Other things that might be changing are like the volume of this balloon, the surface area of, of the balloon. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to label the radius. The radius is definitely something that's changing. Okay, so we are ready for step three. All right, step three is to identify the rates you know. and the rates you want to find. Identify the rates that you know and the rates that you want to find. So in our problem, so let's write down the ones that we know and then we'll write down the ones that we want to find. Okay, so this problem tells us the rate at which we are blowing air into this balloon. Okay. That's, and if I look at the units of this, centimeters cubed per second, this is a unit of volume on top. It's how much volume is being added per second. Okay, so this is, what I know is the rate of change of the volume, and I would write that as dv dt, and dv dt is 20, if I just write down the number. Okay, so dv dt, this represents the rate of change of the volume. That's what's given to us in the problem. And I want to find the rate at which the radius is changing. So I want to find dr dt. And specifically in part A, I want to find dr dt when the radius is 7 and when the radius is 12. So I want to do this when r is 7 and when r is 12. Okay, all right, so that's step three. We are on to step four. Step four is to write an equation relating 
the quantities of interest. Relating the quantities of interest. Okay, so in this case, one of the quantities was the radius, because I want to find dr dt. The other quantity is the volume, because I know dv dt. Okay, so the equation I'm going to use is for the volume of a sphere. So I got to remember my formula for volume of a sphere. Going back to geometry now, this is volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. All right, after we have that, now I need to somehow get a dt in this. Like I need a dv dt, I need a dr dt. And to do that, this is going to be our next step. Step five is going to be to take ddt of both sides. Okay, and so because the variable t is different from the variables that I have in my problem, it's going to involve differentiating implicitly. All right, so we will take ddt of the left-hand side, and that's going to be equal to ddt of the right-hand side. So we'll have ddt of v is equal to ddt of 4 thirds pi are cubed. All right. And as we mentioned, now we want to do implicit differentiation on this. So on the left hand side, the derivative of v we would write as dv dt. On the right hand side, I'm still going to need to differentiate implicitly. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to first deal with this 3, the r cubed. And that's going to come down. And when it comes down, it's going to multiply the 4 thirds, and it'll cancel the 3 on the bottom. So I'll have a 4 pi r squared, but then I have to do chain rule, because these variables are different. And I got to multiply by the derivative of the r, the inside. And that is dr dt. So once we have that implicit differentiation done, now we want to plug in for the things that we know. So this is step 6. So now we are going to solve for the quantity that we want. And we'll do that by plugging in the things that we know first. OK, so remember, we know dv dt. That was 20. And this is going to be equal to 4 pi r squared. And I want to do it for two different r values. So for right now, let me just keep it as r squared. And that, I get that times dr dt. And if I isolate this, if I isolate dr dt, dr dt equals, I'll get 20 divided by 4 pi r squared. And I could cancel a 4 on the top and the bottom and be left with, let's see, 5 over pi r squared. All right, so I'm just scooting that down because that down I didn't need all that room. So we're ready to answer part A now, which is now let's plug in our two r values it was asking about. So we'll do r equals 7, and then we'll do r equals 12. So if I take r equals 7 and I plug it in, we get dr dt equals 5 over pi times r squared, so over 7 squared. This is going to be 5 over 49 pi. And this is a rate here, so it's going to have units. So on the on the top, it's the units of the top variable of r. And the units of the radius were centimeters. And on the bottom, it's going to be the units of, of the variable t, which in this problem were a second. So we have 5 over 49 pi centimeters per second. All right, so if I do the same thing with 12, we get dr dt equals 5 over pi times 12 squared. And multiplying that out, we get 5 over 144 pi, and the units are going to be the same, centimeters per second. OK, and then B asks, well, which one of these is larger? So if we compare these two fractions, they have the exact same numerator. But the 144 pi is the bigger denominator. And if I have a bigger denominator, that's going to make that whole fraction smaller. All right, so that means my derivative, my dr dt is larger. It was asking me where it was larger. This is going to be larger at t equals 7. OK, so it's larger at t equals 7. But then it was asking me to explain, well, why is that? Why is that the case intuitively? So the radius, so dr dt is representing the rate at which the radius is changing. 
And that's bigger at t equals 7. So 7 seconds in, the radius is changing at a quicker rate than it is when r equals 12. So the reason for that is, if I just think about this intuitively, if if we inflate the balloon, which is what's going on, if we inflate a balloon at a constant rate like this, as the volume gets larger, it has less impact on the radius. So if you think back to maybe when you've uh, inflated a balloon before or seen other people do it, initially when you start inflating the balloon, the radius gets bigger quite fast. But the bigger and bigger that the balloon is, the less of an impact that has on the radius. 